One of the most common questions I get asked about is what foods do I eat? Well, this is what we're going to talk about in this video. If you want to know about the philosophy and the structure of my diet of some of the main principles that I follow, then check out the video where I discuss about the diet and the daily routine that helped me to lower my biological age by 12 years. And it has helped me to achieve one of the slowest speeds of aging in the world, which is 0.62 based on the do not in pace value. So I'm here in my kitchen. I'm gonna walk you through step by step of my day of when I eat these foods and uh, why so first in the morning I'm not gonna eat anything. I'm actually have some uh, green tea So this is a very great source of antioxidants It's low caffeine and it's just a nice way to kind of start the day in my opinion in a few hours I'll have actual coffee. So this is uh, one of the best coffees in the world. It's low toxins It's organic and it actually has a bunch of superfoods in there as well Theanine, maca root, raw cacao, and lucuma. So this is the brand that I'm actually um, working with together as well. Before my workout, I'll have some protein to help with the protein synthesis and obviously making gains as well. So uh, the uh, regularly, most of the time, is going to be just regular whey protein. I'll uh, ha have like 30 grams of protein from this whey protein. And uh, this is usually going to be the kind of pre-workout meal. In some cases, I'll also have a piece of fruit, whether that be a banana, whether that be like an apple or like an orange or something like that pre-workout to help with uh, some aspects of um, the exercise performance. And in some cases it could also be like some uh, just berries like uh, strawberries, uh, blueberries or cherries or whatever just to get a little bit of like simple carbs in there. Before the workout I'll usually also have uh, together with the whey protein some collagen because having collagen then plus vitamin C from the fruit actually is very beneficial for stimulating the collagen synthesis in the tendons and the ligaments that you're going to train. So uh, definitely the best time to have the uh, collagen is before the workout together with vitamin C to get the most optimal effects. Let's move on with my protein sources. What kind of proteins do I eat? So of course eggs are a huge staple of my diet. I eat eggs pretty much every day and uh, they have choline they have a lot of other nutritious uh, vitamins and minerals and amino acids that are just like i mean they taste great as well they're very easy to make and very quick to make i do hunt i hunt my own game i hunt my own uh, animals and uh, this is uh, obviously one of the most nutrient dense most nutritious uh, meat in the world so like moose elk deer those uh, game meat these are the most nutrient dense and they have the least of any like pollutants or anything of that. So I hunt regularly. I, if I hunt something, then I'll, you know, can the meat. I'll just cook the meat in the oven. This in this can, we have a moose meat right now. But uh, yeah, like if you hunt the meat, if you hunt the moose or something else, then you can get a lot of like these organs as well. So like moose liver, that's First of all, it's very huge, like you get like two kilograms of liver and you can eat it for pretty much the entire year, like microdose the moose liver for the entire year. And uh, yeah, like the liver is also very nutritious. I eat liver quite regularly. If I'm not eating the actual moose liver or if I want to change it up in a once in a while, then I'll just have some liver pate. So uh, buying some nice liver pate that doesn't have any like extra unnecessary ingredients. So this liver pate only has beef liver, a little bit of uh, pork meat, uh, water, onions, carrot, and it doesn't have like any other oils or stuff like that. So uh, yeah, like if you are choosing a liver pate, then yeah, just check the ingredients that it doesn't have like a bunch of additional other stuff. So regular beef, I do eat a little bit of beef, maybe like once a week, I'll have a steak. Uh, it's not like my favorite foods. I prefer to have either like wild game or fish or eggs. And uh, this usually is going to be just some regular beef uh, steak. I'll have it like once or twice a week at the most. Another cool food I want to share with you is uh, called like meat jello in Estonia. It's like a traditional Estonian food. It's pretty much just you cook all the like tenderness meat parts like the legs and uh, the joints and stuff like that. You cook it in like low heat for many hours and the gelatinous stuff comes out. It becomes jello. It's high in collagen, it's high in glycine, it's pretty much meat jello and it actually tastes really nice. It's one of my favorite like meat sources and protein sources and it's very healthy because gelatin, it's 
very beneficial for the collagen and the glycine content and is also perfectly balanced with the methine into glycine ratio. So uh, I eat this quite regularly because it's high in glycine and uh, I want to get as much dietary glycine as uh, possible into my diet. So this meat jello, you can make it at home, but uh, yeah, you can just uh, you know maybe Google a recipe or something like how to make it. When it comes to fish, then uh, my favorite fish is actually herring and herring is actually the highest source of creatine in the world. Herring has a lot, so like double the amount of creatine than red meat and beef. So herring is hugely underrated. It's very high in selenium, very high in magnesium and creatine as well. So uh, certainly I like to have herring because in these parts of the world, in the Baltic Sea, herring is a very common. It's like a very traditional food. I've been eating it all the time, all my life pretty much. And it tastes amazing. This one is just in marinated. It has a little bit of onions. You don't want to have like the herring that is inside oils and like canola oil and stuff like that. If you do have like a fish like sardines or mackerel or herring, whatever inside oil, then you, you can just wash it. Like that's obviously better than eating it with oil. But I usually prefer to have just the one in marinated or something else that uh, doesn't have the oil. Some other fish that I might have is just like regular white fish. This one is uh, Alaskan Pollock, uh, but uh, in, in Estonia, we also have a lot of cod. We have some salmon, we have some trout and uh, those kinds of things. We have very small fish as well, like local sardines. They're called like Baltic sprats. So yeah, I eat pretty a lot of fish. I lived on an island all my life and uh, we have a lot of seafood there. So uh, yeah, fish is great. Healthy omega-3 fatty acids. You get a lot of vitamins and minerals from there as well. There is the concern that uh, fish has a lot of heavy metals inside it because the seas are polluted. Yes, that is true to a certain point, but you also get a lot of other things that you don't get from other foods. So I think the nutritional value of the fish far outweighs any of the potential harm that you might get from a little bit of heavy metals. And the, the thing with heavy metals is that, you know, you can get it from any other food as well. If you think that beef isn't polluted with heavy metals, then you're wrong. <laughs> like even regular cattle, all animals pretty much, uh, unless you're eating wild game, then you are getting some heavy metals and stuff like that. So you don't really, you know, can't avoid it, but you can detox it. You can easily detox heavy metals with taking antioxidants, taking things like helping to detox you and go to the sauna regularly. When it comes to some plant-based proteins, then uh, this is my baby. <laughs> this is my, uh, let's say, company that I helped to create, co-found. It's uh, Crump. It's 100% uh, whole food based, plant-based protein, which is super high in protein. It is 56 grams of protein per 100 grams, which is much higher than beef and much higher than wild game even. Of course, it's a plant-based protein, which reduces some of the amino acid quality, but because it's so high in the protein itself, then it doesn't really matter. So it's basically like this dry granule made of only hemp and protein. There's no other ingredients. There's not even salt. There's no oils. There's no additives. When you soak it in water, then uh, you're gonna create this uh, plant-based alternative to meat. It's obviously not meat, it's just plant-based protein. And it tastes more like some sort of um, gelatinous tissue. It tastes like tendon when you cook it. And uh, yeah, I usually make like minced meat out of it. I make a stir fry out of it with different vegetables, beans and stuff like that. The last protein source I wanna share with you is cottage cheese. So dairy, I do consume dairy. I think dairy is great. It's very nutritious and it has a lot of health benefits. It helps obviously to increase your calcium intake, which is good for the bones and just overall muscle growth even. But the dairy is also associated with actually reduced diabetes and uh, just a better body composition. So people who eat dairy generally have less fat, more muscle, because dairy binds to some of the fats that you eat and you excrete more fat from your food and uh, makes you lose weight and makes you build muscle because dairy is also very anabolic. I usually have dairy after my workout. Obviously, whey protein is already dairy. But if I want to, in the evening, I want to like boost my protein intake, want to make sure that I get adequate protein intake, I'll have some cottage cheese, I'll have some berries, so uh, blueberries, strawberries, cherries, which are perfect combo in my opinion. And uh, I might add like some nuts there as well. Usually my nuts, uh, the main nuts that I eat are uh, Brazil nuts. So they're gonna be very high in selenium and you can just cover your daily selenium intake with one to two uh, Brazil nuts. If I do want to have something more sweet and if I didn't eat the meat jello for the day, then uh, I can also just make regular jello. So you just have this gelatin powder that uh, you uh, heat up, you let it become gelatinous, and you can make like a nice dessert out of it. Like gelatin desserts 
are probably the healthiest desserts in the world because it's super high in glycine, super high in collagen, and low calories. Like there's very little calories in this in this Jello, and you can just eat it if you're dieting. You can eat it for better sleep. You can eat it for better skin health, better anti-aging, and yeah, I eat very regularly uh, gelatin. And sometimes if I do want to have something more for dessert, for example, then um, we have another uh, crump product that is a uh, crump cereal. So this is the healthiest cereal in the world. It's high protein and low fat, low calories and lower carb. This uh, cereal does have uh, gluten free oats, but uh, everything else, there's no added sugar. It's uh, low sugar, but high protein and it tastes super amazing. The ingredients are yeah, gluten free oats, then the crump mix a little bit and we have some uh, dried cranberries, pumpkin seeds, salt, cinnamon and a little bit of honey. This is how it looks like. It's uh, just, yeah, the healthiest cereal kind of in the world and it tastes great. It's, uh, you know, perfect amount of protein and some carbohydrates, fiber as well. And I'll just eat with uh, like some uh, milk or something like that. Now, when it comes to my actual meals, then usually it's just gonna be some protein source, some fiber source or vegetable, and uh, some uh, starchy carbohydrates to help, especially if I worked out, then I'll have like a higher carb meal. So the average meal of that would generally be like some sort of a carb source. You know, this is a purple potato. I chose this one right now because I, I don't remember the last time I ate a purple potato. So I just wanted to kind of t experiment it. It can also be a sweet potato. It can also be a regular white potato. It doesn't matter. I usually yeah, just eat something that has carbohydrates. Then some uh, fiber source. Usually it's going to be some like cruciferous vegetable for the methyl donors and the other beneficial compounds that help with sulforaphane and glutathione increase. That's a lot of longevity benefits from there. The vegetables can also be regular zucchini or just, you know, if it's a frozen vegetable, then I'll just have frozen broccoli, frozen carrots, frozen cauliflowers. Some of the raw vegetables that I like to eat are carrots. So uh, raw carrots are actually very nice for helping with like the microbiome, helping to bind to certain toxins in the gut. So actually I might have like this as even if I'm like just feeling a bit hungry, I'll just eat like a raw carrot in the kind of fastest state. Next up, we have another amazing source of methyl donors, especially uh, trimethylglycine and betaine. So beetroot, so this is some sort of a beetroot salad. It's called uh, vinaigrette. It's a, like a local traditional Estonian salad. It's basically just cabbage with uh, beetroot. Tastes uh, pretty good. And uh, I'll do also sometimes have just regular steamed beetroot that is uh, pre-packaged. Fermented foods, I have a little bit of fermented foods as well in my everyday diet. Pretty much this is kimchi, so uh, this is more like Chinese, made of Chinese cabbage. And uh, it could also be just regular sauerkraut. And uh, most of the time it is sauerkraut, but this time here we have kimchi. I just add a little bit of fermented foods into my daily diet. And sometimes if I'm not eating potatoes, it's like a lower carb day. Or if I want to manage my blood sugar levels a bit better, then it's going to be like something. This is a lentil pasta. So it's a, just a pasta made of lentils, which is very low carb and higher in fiber and lower glycemic. Mushrooms. I like mushrooms. They're a great source of spermidine and uh, vitamin D2 even. So uh, yeah, mushrooms are very nutritious and these are just the regular dried mushrooms. But it could also be just, uh, you know, chanterelle mushrooms or champignon mushrooms, whatever kind of mushrooms they are. Herbs. I'm a huge fan of herbs. Rosemary, I add it to a lot of the foods that I fry. So if I fry eggs, if I fry meat, I always add a little bit of rosemary because the herbs like rosemary and thyme and parsley, all those things, they have anti-glycation effects. So they help to reduce the formation of these advanced glycation end products in the meat when you're frying it in high temperatures. So it makes the food a lot healthier and reduces the oxidation potential of the food that you're uh, eating. Plus, it also helps with the you know, CD38 inhibition and autophagy regulation. So it's a very you know, nutritious, nutrient-dense food. And it also has many like protective effects, anti-inflammatory, antioxidant effects. Lastly, I'll cover some uh, additional supportive foods, if you will. And for example, olive oil, like I do, I think olive oil is the healthiest fat in the world. It's very high in polyphenols, high in antioxidants and uh, it's also very tasty in a lot of ways. So I'll just have this dark bottle is the one that you want. You wanna have extra virgin olive oil that's in a dark bottle, not, a, not exposed to any sunlight and 
You also want to consume it relatively quick, quickly. You don't want it to have sitting on the shelf for too long. Ghee is another fat that I might uh, cook with and uh, yeah, just uh, grass fed. Ghee from uh, Nordcode uh, is uh, something that I use to uh, cook my food quite a lot. Apple cider vinegar, I uh, like to add this to a lot of my meals because it helps with digestion and the big, biggest benefit, the biggest reason I use it has to do with the fact that apple cider vinegar can lower the glycemic response to the food that you eat. So it can be up to like 55% lower. Seaweed, uh, seaweed is very high as well in many different vitamins and minerals. Iodine, taurine is the highest source of taurine in the world and uh, it actually tastes pretty nice. This is a dried dulse, so it's this kind of purple seaweed and uh, yeah, just sprinkle it on my salad or something like that. Or just eat it like this, it's uh, very nice. Wheat germ, it's the highest source of uh, spermidine as well as trimethylglycine in the world. So I use it uh, like a supplement, although it's like considered an actual food. And it's just, you know, this kind of powder that I sprinkle either onto my food or I could even put it into my protein shake or something like that. It's just uh, like a supplement for increasing dietary spermidine intake and trimethylglycine intake. But I don't recommend taking the spermidine from a supplement because you will not have any you know, solid evidence to suggest that the supplemental spermidine has any effects, but the dietary spermidine definitely does. So you can get spermidine from mushrooms, all many of these different foods, many of these different foods already have spermidine, but uh, I make sure that I get the uh, required amounts from just taking like one teaspoon of this uh, wheat germ per day. Dark chocolate, so this is the best chocolate that I've tasted in the world and uh, I really like it. It's 90% dark chocolate by Nordcode. It has MCT oils and cacao nibs. It tastes great. Usually I just take one square of it before my workout. It boosts dopamine. And it has like some health benefits as well for nitric oxide. So there we have it. These were the foods that I eat on a daily basis. And as you can see, it's pretty balanced. It includes plants, it includes uh, animal proteins, includes different kinds of food groups. I don't really, you know, avoid any certain food group, although I do try to avoid like uh, added seed oils and uh, extra added sugars and stuff like that but generally like I'm not afraid of gluten I'm not afraid of dairy I'm not afraid of uh, whatever lectins or uh, oxalates or whatever because yeah my health is uh, great and I don't have any food intolerances I have like very robust uh, metabolism and very robust digestion so so far this works great I think I'm getting uh, a lot of results by following this diet and uh, yeah things are going great Make sure you definitely check out the previous video about the diet structure and the principles and some of the other routines I follow to slow my speed of aging. But other than that, thanks for watching this video. Make sure you click a like, subscribe, notification bell as well. My name is Seem. Stay optimized, stay empowered.